Good morning, it's Friday. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your wrath, and do not chasten me in your anger. For your arrows have pierced me deeply, and your hand has pressed down upon me. There is no health in my body because of your wrath, no peace in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone over my head as a heavy burden, they weigh too much for me. The psalmist in Psalm 38 was asking God to give him a break. And the great thing is that God has done that because God has sent his son to die for us, to take upon himself the punishment due to our sins so that we can be set free. And we no longer have to be concerned about God's punishment upon us because we have been truly forgiven. And yet we sometimes use that as an excuse to be lax in our seeking of uh, holy lives, of good living. And therefore, uh, we need to confess our sins. Father God, I pray that you will have mercy on me and all who are worshipping with you today. We pray that we will know your presence to forgive, your power of healing, the joy of being restored to you uh, with all the glory of your love in our hearts. We confess that we have often fallen short of your standards and we ask your forgiveness. We do this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My little prayer book goes on to quote from Colossians chapter 3, verse 8. May I put away all of these things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from my mouth. I wonder which of those are going to be tempting you today. Is it anger, a sudden outburst? Is it wrath, a real turning against somebody? Is it malice, that thinking ill of people? Slander, saying bad things about people? Abusive language, using strong words where gentle words would be much better. May God help us to grow in our obedience to him and our holiness of life. We're back in Revelation chapter 3 today and we're at verse 4. Jesus is talking to the church at Sardis, that city which was set on a hill which had let its guard down. But some of the people there were not so concerned about looking good. They were concerned to be good. And this is what he says to them. Yet you still have a few names in Sardis, people who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. The one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments, and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. People, he says, who have not soiled their garments. Uh, there are some small people in our lives at the moment and they get very good at getting very dirty very quickly. It doesn't take them many minutes once they get crawling or once they get moving or once they start eating uh, or falling over as they walk about um, to get themselves uh, muck up to the eyeballs, as we might say, but not on a, a video. And there is that sense in which all of us who are grown-ups get ourselves messed up a little bit. And Jesus, as he speaks to the church at Sardis, is commending those who have not had their garments soiled. They have remained true and faithful in the midst of all the uh, temptations of the world around them. I wonder how careful we are to maintain the walk of holiness in our daily living. I wonder could we be the people who in coming days uh, are able to be faithful and true. Yes, we will fall short of our sin and fall short of our holiness because we will fall into sin. But how easily do we let that happen and how much do we fight against it? 
uh, my prayer today again, uh, as in our last little video, is that God would help us to be holy and God would forgive as he yearns to do. And may God give his, us his peace as we worship him this Friday morning. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who, among whom we live, who see us as we really are. We pray that you will help them to be forgiving of us and we of them. Help us as we deal with one another to be holy in our thoughts and gentle in our conversation. To be people who make the world around us a better place and make the life richer and fuller for others. Help us to bring joy, bring laughter, bring comfort, bring hope to the people with whom we have to deal. Help us even as we speak to them to help them hear your grace and love at work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we ask for your mercy uh, to be with those who are at this difficult time teaching in our schools. We thank you for teachers and for all the staff there who clean and care for the place, that together they will be blessed with the joy of doing their jobs well, of seeing children safely brought to and from to school, and will find uh, the education to work well with children through this time of distraction. Father, we thank you for those who teach, and we pray for them and the children, and this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray, Lord God, today for our preparations uh, as church families for this Sunday, for all the sermons that are written by the preachers, for all the hymns that are recorded or performed by the musicians, uh, for all the readings and the uh, welcomes and the cleaning that's done, that as the church is open for worship, so you will keep those who worship there safe. We pray that you will forgive those who are so arrogant as members of the church that they think that they are safe from infections simply because they trust you. We know that you have given us minds to think these things through. You have developed our understanding of science that we would be sensible in how we would handle our health issues. That we know that we have to eat well and carefully so why shouldn't we need to protect ourselves in time of infection? So Lord, we pray that you will help uh, all who belong to the church to be faithful and sensible and careful. And that with the privilege in society of being able to worship, you will help us not to take it for granted. Help all of us who are involved in preparation, in presentation, in attendance, to be careful. Lord, we pray these things in your holy name. Amen. And we ask that God will give us his peace in the day ahead. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. We'll be back tomorrow for our pre-recorded Saturday moment, one of the Psalms probably, and I'll see you again, God willing, on Sunday. You're welcome to watch the service live at 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock from Carridoff and then Killeney, hoping that works for you. Uh, and if not, hopefully you'll be able to come along to worship. And we do look forward to seeing you and to keeping in touch. God bless you, each and every one.